Hi, this is Tim. And this is Jeremy. We, along with Niall Dawson from North Road, are building a new plugin called the QGIS Animation Workbench, which we will refer to as the core for the rest of this video. The goal of this video is to introduce the core to you and to show you some of the use cases for the workbench. We also hope to give you some additional insights into how the plugin works and how it uses the powerful QGIS expression system by adding animation related variables to allow you to create dynamic renderings of your project, which you can output as video. The workbench creates animations from QGIS by generating multiple static frames or images and then combining those frames into an animation using the open source FFmpeg library. An example of an output's frame directory has been displayed on screen while I speak. The core has different operation modes and can iterate over features, zooming from one to the next, or can simply focus on a fixed area for a given number of frames. One of the key things the core does is to generate and expose a number of different expressions variables, as you can see scrolling on the screen, which reflect the current state of the animation sequence. The available variables will differ depending on which operation mode you are in. These variables cover things like which frame within the current sequence the core is rendering, the total number of planned frames, the features we are coming from or going to, the current zoom level, and more. You can then use the core's variables to indicate how the QGIS cartography should change from one rendering to the next. Let's look at a quick example. The real world is not a static environment. This means that showing a static map often misses out on the opportunity to show movement in an area, changes in ti over time, or in different locations. Animated cartographic products will also generally appeal to viewers on modern media like YouTube or TikTok, etc., and can be used on electric billboards and notice boards to provide more engaging information. Animated maps can show local movement like cars dri driving down a road, a cyclist going down a path or a person walking a route, all of which can help to bring your map to life. An example use case could be a map designed for tourists who can be shown an animated person walking down a path to quickly understand a tourism route. Multiple static maps can be used to show changes in an area over time, but an animated map with a transition from one place to the next could be much more effective medium for this. Showing multiple geographic locations on a static map limits the scale at which you can view the different locations. An animated map allows you to show the relationship between locations and to zoom in on each of the locations. During the zoom in, you can show progressively more detail using rule-based symbology. In sphere mode, the coordinate reference system will be manipulated iteratively, incrementing the X and Y origin of the CRS to create a spinning globe effect. Planar mode will pan and zoom the map extent on a flat map, iterating over the features in the layer chosen to be the animation layer. The fixed extent option keeps the map canvas identical but allows for cartography within the extent to be manipulated based on the frame's number. In sphere and planar modes you can configure durations for hovering and traveling. The hovering duration is the time that the map extent will dwell at each feature and animation layer and the travel duration is the time it takes to transition from the extent of one feature to another. Easings are transitions from one state to another along a smooth curve. Changing the easings for panning and zooming allows you to create interesting transitions between features instead of a simple linear transition. If I click on the different options, you can see how the example dot behaves in a different manner, like in quad versus in elastic. The workbench works by generating a series of individual frames, like the example currently on screen, and then collating them together sequentially into either a GIF using the Image Magic Convert application or an MP4 output using FFmpeg. On screen is an example output in the GIF format.
We previously mentioned that the core exposes expression variables. The available variables depend on the context, in other words, which mode you're in. The variables describe the current state of that animation process, e.g. hovering or traveling, which feature is being visited, which feature was last visited, which feature will be visited next, and what the scale is, and where we are in the animation cycle. This is a great simple example of a project you can create using the animation workbench. We will start with a pre-made map and a digitized line along a path or road. We are going to add a symbol layer to the line. We will make the symbol a bit larger than the default so that it is easy to see. We need to tweak a few settings in order to make the point move during the animation. We will draw the dot on the first vertex and not at multiple intervals. QGIS has a great built-in function for offsetting a point along a line. We're going to use the percentage option and then use this snippet. Right now nothing will happen because the workbench isn't being run. In the expression we indicate as a percentage how far along the line the point marker will be rendered. When the animation renders the marker will move along the line as the frame number increases. The expression works by taking the current hover frames value and dividing it by the total number of hover frames. The resulting number is then multiplied by 100 to turn it into a percentage. A more advanced example could animate the point, for example using a GIF, using the new animated markers which are available from QGIS 3.26 and later. If you are working with an older version of QGIS, you can check out our documentation for a workaround that unpacks a GIF as files and then references the appropriate file based on where we are in the animation. To render the animation, open the Animation Workbench and select the Fixed Extent option. Set the number of frames to 300 to create a 10 second clip at 30 frames per second. For each frame rendered, the animation frame will advance by 1 and the animated marker will move along the line based on our calculation. For animated markers, QGIS will automatically advance to the next frame in the animated GIF. We're going to skip over the intro, outro and soundtrack tabs for this example. We will set the output resolution and click run. You can see the animation play in the progress tab and you can see how the dot is moving along as a percentage of the line increases. Now for a more advanced example of an output using the core. We want to stress here that these are just two arbitrary examples and there are an endless number of other things you could do with the core variables to create cool animations. This example iterates over some of the countries in the world and traces the outer perimeter in white. As we change between the countries, you can see how the fill changes to a glowing white which fades in and out with increasing intensity. After 5 seconds, the label of the name of the country appears and then gets bigger and bigger until it fills the screen. The idea behind the label only appearing after 5 seconds is to allow viewers time to try and guess which country is being highlighted. To start with, we made a rule-based style layer for the current country, here. It uses the filter hover feature ID is equal to ID to ensure that only the currently visible country is being shown in the frame. A geometry generator symbol layer for the current country layer generates an increasingly longer piece of the country perimetering and in so doing animates in the drawing of the border. We're not going to show you the expression behind the geometry generator. As you can see in the highlighted section, the width variable section sets the full line variable to be the exterior ring of the country. Then we can use the line substring function which returns a portion of the full line between the specified start and end points. The start distance is 0.0, .0 as we want to start at the beginning of the line and we use an expression to make a dynamic end distance that increases as the animation renders until the end of the line is reached. We calculate the end distance by multiplying the length of the full line by the fraction of the current hover frame divided by the number of hover frames.
This effectively shifts the end of the line substring along the perimeter until the current hover frame is equal to the value of hover frames and the whole perimeter has been highlighted in white. The fill symbol layer of the geometry generator is set to be a white simple line. To create the color change in the country fill, we add a gradient fill symbol layer to the current country layer. A radial gradient type was used so that the gradient starts in the center and radiates out. The other options were left as the defaults. We use a two color color ramp ranging from white to green. For the white color, we used a data define override. Then we use the assistant and set the current hover frames as the value domain. We use values from 0 to 50 so that at 30 frames per second the color, changing, the color changes for 50 frames, which is just under 2 seconds. The transform curve is applied to the symbol layer so that the colors have that pulsing effect. You can see that the color change will follow the line. It starts at white and goes through the color ramp before ending back at white just before 2 seconds into the hover. By clicking on edit we can view the expression that the assistant generated. We can also manipulate the labels using the same approach. Here we create an expression that says if we're hovering over the current features and the current hover frame is more than 150 or 5 seconds at 30 frames per second, then the country name should be displayed. With the assistant we can apply a transform curve to the font size of the country label to make it pulse larger and larger. The resulting expressions snippet from our user interface inputs look something like this. And this is what the output would look like. Right now we are still in early adopter mode. We are planning on releasing the core on the Qtis plugins repository once it is out of the pre-release stage. Major things to do still are testing on Windows and Mac OS, figuring out how to package FFmpeg and convert with the plugins so that they do not need to be manually installed, adding more tutorials to our documentation, and then just a lot of testing. The core is a hobby project and is both open source and non-commercial. We invite all contributors, especially those looking for a bit of fun on the side from their day jobs to participate. Any contributions will be welcome, whether it is to help with coding or to share examples of output maids with the core, help with testing or anything else you'd like to share. If you are feeling adventurous, you can already check out the code from our GitHub repo and get started making animations.